Hey everybody, it is so important that we are properly protecting our skin when we're out and about at parks and trails all across the Bay Area. So I took your questions to an expert. Dr. James Brichnick is the chairman of USF's Department of Dermatology and Cutaneous Surgery. Thank you so much for being with me today. Very, very happy to be here. Let's first talk about sunscreen. We have a question from Gary. He wants to know how long before a walk he should apply sunscreen. Most of the recommendations are 15 to 30 minutes before uh, you take the walk. Um, but certainly just thinking about it and putting it on is, uh, is a really good start. Uh, the other thing to think about is the clothing that you're wearing on your walk, because clothing can also be a very effective sunscreen uh, as well. And the hat and uh, the sunglasses as well. Kay wrote, if my walk is 45 minutes or less, do I need to apply sunscreen? If you're going out it, at you know the beginning of the day or the end of the day, a little less important, but still recommended. Uh, certainly as you go into the middle of the day, absolutely. Jesse wrote, with so many options for sunblock on the market, which brand is recommended? Is lotion better than a spray? I really do like the zinc oxide type uh, sunscreens. Then as far as type, yeah, a lotion or a cream is better than a spray. One of the problems with the sprays is you inhale them uh, and you really don't need the sunscreen in your lungs. Um, so probably best to avoid the sprays. So instead of looking at the brand, should you be flipping the sunscreen over and looking at yeah. the ingredients? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look at, you know, look at the active ingredients. Um, and my preference it leans towards that zinc oxide, but with the understanding that it, it is a little bit more whitening. Um, but it, you know, and that's just because it's reflecting all that light away. I actually like to go to a website called the Environmental Working Group. Um, and, you know, that's a great resource if you want to look at your particular sunscreen and exactly what's in it and how safe different things are. So that's a, that would be a good resource. Another question from Gary. He wants to know which level of SPF do doctors recommend? In general, the thought is, is 30 or better. Um, 15 is probably okay, but one of the problems is that people spread sunscreens too thin. So they can take a 15 and spread it to a, you know, a four or five, uh, but a 30, it's a lot harder to spread it that thin. So you're probably spreading your 30 down to about a 15. So in general, probably use a 30 um, just because most folks are gonna spread it you know, thinner than it actually is designed to be used. F.G. Lynn wrote, is there a sunscreen that won't burn your eyes when your forehead perspires? And Amy says, how do I not get it in my eyes when I start sweating on my walks? Yeah, so, you know, this is an area where I prefer more of the, the wax compounds. So there are these little stick sunscreens that most of the time say baby on them. Uh, but if they're safe for babies, they're probably safe for you too. Um, and they're often based on a zinc oxide or a titanium dioxide. And it's a it's a stick. Uh, it looks like a small antiperspirant stick. And you can use those in that wax because it's not, you know, kind of a cream or an oil. It, it tends to be less likely to drip into your eyes. They're normally hanging as kind of cards at the end of the aisle. And uh, again, they'll say baby, but that, that doesn't mean you can't use them. Danielle is wondering what risks sunscreens have. For the most part, studies have shown these agents to be safe. And I think it's better to use a sunscreen than not to use a sunscreen. Let's move on to clothing now. Lisa wants to know, can sun rays still affect skin through clothes? They can. Uh, and, you know, a lot of it is how tight weave uh, um, or, you know, whether there's a UV protection in them or a pigment that's absorbing the light. You know, one of the tricks is if you hold it up to light and you can see light through it, light's getting through. Uh, if you hold up light and, you know, nothing's getting through, it's a very effective sunblock and you don't necessarily need the, you know, the, the high priced SPF clothing, you know, just a good tight weave that you hold up, um, makes a difference. So if you're going to be out gardening or golfing or whatever, we just have to kind of change our mindset a bit into wearing, um, protective clothing that reflects that heat away. It, if it's, you know, loose and airy, it can actually be much more comfortable uh, than actually being hit by it, that, you know, hot sun uh, at noon uh, here in the Tampa area. And that actually leads into Teresa's question. She wants to know if she still needs to wear sunblock under clothing. If it's something that you can, you know, easily kind of see through or you hold it up and the, the light's getting through, then I think the answer is yes. I think if light's not getting through, it's a waste of sunscreen. 
Joanna wants to know how you can protect your head if you are not wearing a cap of some sort. A hat is recommended. Uh, if you have thick hair, it can do a reasonably good job of help, you know, protecting your, your head. Now, of course, I've seen many people with real bad burns on their part. If you've got thin hair, you may want to use one of these uh, gels or something like that. That's a little easier to, you know, you have to part the hair and kind of work it in around the, the scalp. But that, you know, it is unfortunately a little bit more of a challenge. Kevin is curious about the best type of hats for golf. You know, one, just make sure the light's not getting through. And then two, as wide of a brim as you feel comfortable with. Dr. Grichnik, I really appreciate your time. If you are interested in learning more about what he had to say, just look for an article on our website under the walking club section.